Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one we have Shivana because we've had the mid-season patch, 12.10, mega changes, mega tankiness for everybody around. Assassins are crying like ADCs usually do. And Shivana, if you watch the best junglers video I just put out on the main channel, coupled with, you know, having a look at your favorite stats site, you'd see that her win rate was really big in the first 24 hours. It has since stabilized a little bit, but it is still significantly higher than it was before. And instead of being a hidden OP for the general population of players, it's a straight up OP at this point. And the reason is because with everyone getting more HP, 70 overall, 14, 12 per level, something like that, and plus add, added um, magic and armor per level, the HP disadvantage a lot of champions will have, she doesn't care about because she does percentage max HP damage on her E. And in addition to that, she also had the uh, bug fixes to her Q. Finally, it will work on uh, inhibitors as well as the Nexus. And of course, it will also have an extended range like in NASA's Q. So small little things on the bug fixes, quality of life changes essentially, but they can have a small impact in terms of the quality of, you know, maybe you don't get the inhib if you don't have it. Uh, maybe you, you know, die because you have to overchase for the final order attack on a champion. All of these things can really add into small situations, nitty gritty situations where you potentially might need a bit more damage and in this patch, let me tell you after playing quite a few games this week, actually more than I usually would, just because I want to get a real sense of things, I have lived and had long fights and lived with 10 HP more than I can remember because people need second rotations of spells, of auto attacks to actually kill me, deal with me, whatever I'm playing, whether it's support or jungle, and it's really fascinating to see who kind of overestimates the damage and who doesn't. And so with Siobhan having that max HP damage passive, any champion that does, they typically hit a little less because they're able to negate some of that HP uh, inherently through their spells, not requiring itemization. So that's very interesting. Now, what we're doing here is recognizing, aha, blue buff leash to a Talon. Talon also stabilizing a little bit, but is significantly weaker than he was. He was really creeping up as well. So we're going to do a blue into a grump into a red, so you can reverse clear. This allows you safety against a cheese known as the disgusting thing of Talon, whose name apparently, I, I think all variations of jungle god, um, or Junk King from, from, from Kenyon are basically taken, so we're basically into those characters now. Uh, match history, of course, will be linked below so you can see what happens, but it's tough to find good, good, good replays as we drag the camp. Of course, burn damage will do the work. It's tough to find good, good, good replays uh, early in a patch and actually had a really spicy one from a Shivana. Really nice comeback game, 95% KP, and then, of course, Guess what? You know it. She had a Yumi, so can't use that. That's nonsense. So a little bit more of a conservative game in terms of, you know, excitement, but we should have a lot of kills, high KP, and show you why this champion is actually so strong. So if Talon gets leashed on the bottom side, he still is a full clearing jungler if he decides not to cheese. Renekton uses prior to ward, standard stuff, and because we didn't do the Krugs, we'll have a little bit of an advantage in terms of snacking away this crap, but obviously we don't have smite for it now, and here goes Talon pushing wave, uh, slice and dice out of the uh, Aurelia E. We move on, move on to the top lane to try and help out a little bit. But obviously now we're down a level because we didn't do Krugs. We don't have Smite. We might have to give this up or just duke it out and fight it out. Let's see. Victor seems to be moving first. Valkaz is kind of static a little bit. Excuse me, moving first. He went back to base. He has no mana. <laughs> and now we are going to push him out of the river, maybe. Okay, there we go. There we go. There he is. All right. So he didn't go back to base, but he, he, he pulled back on the camera. I just saw movement. And now, you know, with Renekton not having their prior, thanks to the gank, you probably have to leave. So you guys know me very, very well. If you're going to fight over a Krabby for 20% reduction in experience, I think it's better just to say, you know what, Victor, yes, he has no mana, but Renekton's pushed in. And yes, Victor can still rotate. Really has prior. Let me just go and take this bottom crab, which of course he does super, super quickly. And Talon shows up, now we're level 4. The downside to the reverse clear is actually this. You lose the Krugs if you, don't do, if you, if you do it that way. And now you want to have level 4 to fight over crabs. Talon going back in the bush. This is remarkably arrogant, but parkour. Karma. Karma's strong. Anyone else playing Karma? Anyone faced a Karma? Um, anyone had a Karma on their team for level 3? Very nice. <laughs> very, very nice. I know obviously heals and shields were nerfed, but that lazy back from Talon is going to hurt him. And this for Shivana is what we want, right? Full clear, level 4. Can I crab? No. Swap back to base, take the other crab. Full clear, can I take a crab? Yes, cool. Can I double crab? Maybe. Okay, never mind. Back to base. Resequence, okay? We're looking for six, fast experience. And remember, when you get more HP per level, when you get more armor and magic resist per level, the more experience lead you have, all right, the tankier you're going to be for champions who are behind. 
Will we survive? Of course, we have PTA, you would have seen the runes. We have Triumph, we enjoy. And now we go back to base. Now we could have taken this potentially, but obviously with talent sequencing bot to top, I might expect him to sneak around here and try and do something. Uh, bot lane trapping. We do have to be slightly cautious. We have smite here though for the, ah, ha. Vision confirmed, which means we can go back to base and relax. Obviously talent might look to do this now, um, as they typically do, because they're diseased, you know, a little bit, a little bit. Mentally unstable are talent junglers. They typically also, when they're the smurf junglers who think they're very good, who are not because they're playing talent, um, and you know, using their knowledge to abuse unsuspecting innocents such as yourselves in the depths of solo queue, they, they get quite, quite angry when things don't go their way. Just my personal experience, but it's a lot of it. Hey, look, see? I mean, it's so predictable. <laughs> it's like, I have not seen this game. I have no idea what's happening. And I have the vision on. On, on this, I don't know where he's going to go after Raptors. I can see he takes Raptors, obviously, but you kind of know. I mean, they're going to use Park all for that. So, Renekton hit 6 first against the Aurelia. Here's up uh, 7 CS. And, of course, like our um, Hecarim gameplay the other day, gank, then farm. Even though we're not level 5, even though we're level 4, even though we are not the Shyvana experience absorbing vacuum machine that we would like to be at this stage, we're still doing a good job. And, of course, Talon, you know, it's like... They nerfed the farming capabilities, and obviously that was blessed. Hashtag blessed, straight up lose Hamilton luck there for, for talents that stayed alive for so long. But then they realized, but he can still clear fast. Oh well, we'll play Talon again and just spam gank and farm as well. So he's definitely not a, as obnoxious as he was, but when you're playing something like Shivana, you have to recognize that if you AFK farm and do nothing against something like a Talon, you're gonna have a rougher time. So this, this Shivana is playing it very, very well, actually. I do enjoy. The reverse clear concept just to prevent against invades and cheese. Also the fact that we know, I don't like the fighting over the top crab a little bit. I th think that took too long. But you know, nice dive here instead of focusing too much on farm. Talon of course yeets back here if we track in CS. You'll see 40. He takes the crab, uh, the Krugs, that's 44. Now he's moving down. Now I anticipate some movement here. Okay, here and here. So hopefully, we okay, we want to drag the Raptors 100%. Oh man, this is so diseased when this happens. This is so we. Ah! <laughs> uh, we needed to smite that and get it. Uh, Renata, yo, can we have something? I mean, I know it's comma, but can we... We don't have smite for this now either. Ooh, this is good, actually. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. But this overaggression from the Talon and the comma can actually come back to bite them. Over the wall we come, Talon has smite, we don't, which means... Uh, oh my goodness, we hit six. <laughs> Triumph. Wow, that was tough. Let's look at that again, actually. Let's look at that again, because that's really, really close, okay? Here we go. So, right here, okay, Talon goes in, we hit six because we're able to secure the red, we ult out to get our HP stacks, Draven ends up rotating and gets a kill. So the fact that we sneak away that red, and Talon with, with, with smite up, as far as I can see, should not have lost that, right? He should not have lost that. He should have been able to do something about it, but, um, Shivana comes out on top, she gets the, she gets the red. I'll play, baby. This huge, right? Knowing and looking at your experience bar, how close you are to six, determines whether or not you want to take that fight. If Talon is six, and taking red won't give you six in any universe, then it's a rough fight because you're not going to have your ult if you do get the red. But because she knew she was this close, even if there was just a ward, scan and take a ward, she gets six and she can change the nature of that fight. But obviously Renata Glass doing her work, over aggression being punished. Hey, shield gone, we'll take this huge Scuttle Crab. Um, guys, mid game, late game, that crab is worth just as much as Krugs and takes you half a second to take, make sure you're securing those, not giving them to your laners. I mean, we get the jungle bonus experience on these things as well. Now Talon, obviously from this overaggression outside in, will fall back to his blue side. And because we have this advantage, ooh, that would have been filthy. But give him a taste of his own medicine. Now Talon's gonna hippity hoppity here, warded. Now we're upper level, thank goodness. I mean, this is a, a game changing fight there, but the, the, the Shivana played it so well. I mean, wait a second. <laughs> I, to me, this Victor looks like he's existing in his own plane of existence. That's a weird way to say it, but he's, he's really off in dreamland, you know? Even with the level one crab fight, I mean, I, I thought he detached and went somewhere. He's just at lower mana um, and walked back a bit, but he's really a bit airheaded this game, I think. I don't know. Uh, at this point, we have how much in pocket? 2.1, which is a good time to go back to base. If you do stay out to even finish the blue quadrant, you know, for some sort of quadrant clearing OCD that I may or may not have given many, many people, uh, you're a goblin hoarder. You're, you're st stacking way too much gold in your wallet. 
not your crypto wallet because that shit's falling, um, just in your actual wallet. And now you stay out for it. You have 2.5 maybe because there's another kill and assist. And then your team have reset and come on the map again and you're rotating to other fights and you're holding onto this goal. It's not good. So if you have a back moment that's really, really guaranteed and safe, make sure you do that. And of course we have the talent here, right? And we have the Draven who's dead and we have the Valkyrie's moving top lane. With the support just in the bottom lane and knowing the big lead we have at this stage, especially as Shivana, I think it's great here that we recognize we could go for the Herald. Let's just go ahead and gank that bottom lane instead. Use that prior, now we can push this up. Draven might get angry, but you can't worry about these things because Draven's, that's so secret. They're always angry, really. Draven means, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you're wrong, you're always angry. But that's good, because now he's going to go to and hold the mid lane because Valkos was roaming. So good recognition and activating the map but not l 9 his temper so that we can go ahead and secure that objective. And our Talon, basically, okay, despite all of that acrobatic nonsense, they see what I'm talking about with this? There's always one. And this is the thing. Gold, plat, diamonds. You guys complain a lot about your laners. Um, silver everyone does, but in silver everyone's a bit, you know, it's fiesta. Uh, there's always one person on the enemy team that you can do this to, that isn't quite fully focused on the game, that is struggling to, to, to read the game in the way it is. And it's important that you recognize this and abuse it. And the Shivana did this early. Now, most of you, let's be honest, most of you after taking the wolves early would not have towered over this victor, waited for the wave. Can we survive? Ooh, that champion is so annoying. Oh, uh, no. But he dies. Good job disengaging. We'll take an objective, though. While you guys want to play with each other, we will take an objective. Absolutely. Uh, Karma, good luck catching that one. Tristan is getting free plates. We have... <laughs> hey, look at that. We need two and a half to three plates to activate a Herald. Hello. But we also have two top lane. And the pressure we've had to uh, top lane, counter ganking, showing ourselves, shadowing, has really enabled the Renekton to play the lane. So many good things. I'm going to try and wait for the action to die down, and I'll fully explain. But, in th okay, it seems to be the case. Talon, really a lot of action, but a lot of nothing, right? Like the good old classic uh, um, martial art movies of the olden days where they would kind of swing around all their, their hands and you just punch them out kind of thing. It's just a lot of movement and it doesn't really have a lot of substance, this game. But because the Shivana played it properly, yes? And that's the thing. There's two things to this. Ganked and farm, play attention to lanes and when you can impact them. Two, Someone is definitely campable. Someone is definitely killable. Someone is definitely something you can feast on over and over again. Find that lane. There is always one. Secondly, if you do have a winning lane, the best way to support it, what is that? It's to make sure, okay, that we actually go ahead and allow them to win the lane. And that's what happens with a lot of players. They don't allow their laners who are winning to actually win the lane because they'll they say, oh, look, Renekton's pushing the Aurelia. Cool. I'm going to focus bot side or I'm going to counter jungle. And then Talon ganks a few times, he dies, he loses the lead, it really takes over. But because the Shivana showed up, shadowed, and anticipated these things, even though we didn't always get kills, it allowed him to play aggressively knowing the jungler would be there should something happen. So that's really, really huge. And we're seeing all three kinds of options in this game, which is great. Now, Tristan at the bottom lane, hammering away at those plates. That is the downside of this plate, but we obviously have the Herald. We infuse ourselves. Not a lot of core... Shivana sequencing, but the, as I said, the E max HP thing is really, really huge, and she was strong before, you know, so it doesn't really care about those things. The quality of life buffs are really a weird sucker sometimes. They can do wonders and they can do nothing. It really depends on the champion. Um, so we've proc the uh, bone plating there. We do have alt available, so we're just going to yeet in over this and uh, make sure we snack that blue. That's mine. Talon's now down a level. Parkour gaming won't really matter. We hit that E, parkour again. He now smites. Good job, Valkars. We'll take that. Thank you so much. Balding, but... Bless you, sir. Um, you know, it's, it's tough to acknowledge that. I mean, I'll probably join you in the next five, <laughs> next five years. I should just go Ragnar soon, I think. What tattoos should I get and put all over my scalp? I said, <laughs> I went on a bit of a rampage about the, the tattoos. I had to stop and bring it back to the game. So, Shivana now covering the midline. We're going to push this up. The game is, is seemingly in a good spot, but a lot of champions and players in lower elo games, and I just put something like this on my Patreon, by the way, a silver um, player said, look, my early game was so good and pristine and lovely and, and exquisite, and, and then I had this huge lead and I, we just lost. It's like, it doesn't really happen like that. You have to see it through. And at the same time, even then, your early games are not really that great. It's more like, say, even if you have a 7 out of 10 early game, in terms of the targets you want to hit, the enemies are not capable of punishing the three you didn't. Higher up you get, obviously the more punishing that becomes. And 
if you don't see your lead through, you will lose, especially with bounties. So exhaust used. Well, basically, the berserk is just so insane. You see how she's positioning herself. She's just positioning positioning himself in front to do as much as she can until she gets her ultimate. And then she's going to go in here, make sure the victor's killed. The Renata's doing great stuff in the back line. The Valkyrs came in to shoot his laser eyeball. Um, and can we snack something? Oh, well, that looked like it almost missed. But good thing for her, the AoE on that E is 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 ridiculous. Unnatural and stupid and ridiculous. But it is what it is. So, well done, well positioned. And obviously here we've gone the Frostfire Gauntlet build into Demonics. So, Demonics... And a few items, a lot of items actually. The patch notes were just huge on these changes. And I've tried my best to remember literally everything. Um, but, you know, obviously, obviously you, you can't, you know. So the percentage damage has been shifted from the, the demonics. That I did know. Um, so it's not as strong, but obviously Shivana doesn't care because she has base numbers. It's like Warwick. They nerfed his Q heal, but his passive heal... that. That hasn't changed at all, so that's why he's looking good, even though you might not expect him to, you know? So, right. The game is in a delicate balance in terms of we have a huge, huge lead. And it's been such an unassuming lead to, to gain, hasn't it? You just let the guy be aggressive, you play around it, you make the right decisions based upon what you're seeing. You put yourself in the right position as much as possible to make the right plays. And typically, you just punish people's overaggression. And if you make the right moves yourself, 806, that's easy. Um, mid lane, what do we have? A really split pushing bot lane? Bounties are active, and if we make a mistake here and overdive and overdie, bounty, 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 herald up, bounty. Talent's going in in the meantime. Kind of waiting to see if we can get an engage. This is remarkable patience. Renekton's on the other side of that Victor stun field, so we do have to be careful. Uh, see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Beautifully done by the, by the uh, Shivana to actually get over the wall there. Excellent patience. Do we have an E to use? Yes, we do. Yes, we can. Valkos has got to deal with the Shivana, but the Renata saves the Renekton, but the Renekton 100% made an overcommit move. And just again, last night at coaching, same exact things. Huge leads, big fed, nice stuff. Ego into 1v3, die. And now your whole team is disparate back time is in a rough, a rough time. So patience and knowing when to make these plays are good. So and we've had a lot of Back and forth games recently, the Hecarim Macro one is a good example. Long game, that one, but really rife with these kinds of mistakes and deaths, even from the Hecarim itself. That's why I included all of that in the video. But the Shivana, not so much, and that's why it's good to look at what we can do and what we can't do. This is a desperate play by a desperate lady, by a desperate player. You cannot get this. Sorry, ma'am, this will be our Herald. We're going to snack that away. Thank you so much. And now the game is basically all but over 22 to 6. It's weird. Because it didn't look like it would end up this way, I'll be honest with you. You know, when we're having the fight over the red buff, you're thinking, ah, okay, something really interesting. But it turns into such a big snowball because of the Shivana. It's always jungle difference most of the time. Except when it's not, but then it still is. But then it isn't. You know what I mean, right? It's, it's confusing, but yeah, we have a bit of split pushing here. We do have this finished. We can go to the Shadow Flame. So, Vega V2 has... Uh, made a Carfus video on Twitter, recommend going and watching that, about two minutes long, obviously, because of the limit of the view time, talking about the Shadow Flame's importance over a death cap in this particular patch because of the MR per level, because of the HP per level, it has significantly more value now. Why did I click on Aurelia? And the Shivana can also buy it, and I mentioned this already in the Best Jungles video, um, or, and I mentioned this last week as well in some of my other content, saying that Shadow Flame could be hugely valuable in certain champions, including the Shavana. Obviously, the HP is nice as well, right? Because when you have a huge lead with huge HP, if they have no percentage uh, HP damage, what are they going to do? You know, what are they actually going to do to you? It's going to take them so long to kill you. Aurelia, I think it's so annoyed because she was so damn close to having good things in the top lane. 0.5 speed, excuse me. There we go. And of course, we're alive because Karma. Sorry, Renata. But Karma also. Some of these supports are really... I'm interested to, interested to see how the meta fully develops as we kind of figure out, okay, what is truly the best? Um, and how do we play around it? You gotta let the game breathe, right? You gotta let the game breathe. I know we're gonna deal with some big outliers, like uh, Talia just got a huge hotfix because that champion was disgustingly broken. Like, whew, that was not, I didn't even make a video on it yesterday because I knew it was getting nerfed on hotfix because they mentioned it. Uh, but we have to see how the meta develops in terms of what becomes truly outrageous. Draven's just along for the ride. Renekton has done a great job, but again, still along for the ride. And Shivana's the one with the kill pressure, the damage, the tankiness. 
her team's doing a great job, but they're playing around her. You know, she is leading her team. So a lot of you can say, oh, the laners are so great. I mean, 7 out of 25 for the Renekton. You know, 11 out of 25 for the Draven, which is actually pretty decent in this at this stage for an ADC. And of course, 11 for Valkyrs as well. But it's the Shivana that's 18 out of 25, you know? And she's just controlled the objectives, controlled the waves. And who can fight her at this stage? Who can fight her? That's why we're here. Nobody. Nobody. That's it. Nobody. Now, if you are in the situation as talent, people always ask me this. What do you do? Well, firstly, don't make plays like that. <laughs> don't go in these dumb invades and then fall back. And if you're going to try these actionable plays um, in terms of like actually getting into people's faces, please ensure, as they do a little bit of endgame trolling so we can talk generally about the meta, please ensure that you are much more conservative with your execution. And if Shivana is something you cannot handle 1v1, that you are in turn tracking her as well, because it doesn't look like the Talon was fully tracking the Shivana, where she was tracking the Talon and anticipating his moves and just putting herself in a position to counter gank and, you know, be in a position to, to maximize the uh, the positives and basically enhance the negatives for the Talon. But the Talon, the fact that he did all of that running around and it was like one zero, one, one zero or something like this, it's it's really, for me, funny that, that someone does things like that. I don't understand it. And if you are in this negative situation, hey, wave clear, wave clear, wave clear. You do have a victor. You do have a bit of a split push component, but it's really a mental game because it takes patience and giving up towers and barons and inhibs. Oh, it's so difficult to do. And again, I recommend the hack room video for more specifics on what you have to do in these kinds of games because we talked about it quite a lot in there. And a lot of the time it's quite repetitive. You know, it's the same kind of thing, same kind of concept, no matter what champion you're playing. Now, we're just going to siege. This is the most important thing that I can tell you in this particular situation as the Shivana's team. You have two inhibs down. You need to push this one. These two will push themselves up. If you have someone that can kind of push and force rotations that makes this easier, do so. If that's you, be that person. Which in this case, it is Shivana. Hey, look, it works now. Ah, ah. Bug fixes. <laughs> Bug fixes come through big. You, you laugh, but if she died and didn't get that because she didn't have the ability to actually hit it, right? And now the enemy team went for the Baron in another game state. Uh, that's costly, but because she could actually take it, it might change the nature of the game. Now, I don't know what you think you're going to be doing to a Shivana with Frostfire, Demonic, Shadow Flame. And um, the Shadow Flame, obviously, the anti-shield component is huge as well. We live, obviously. No one can kill us. But again, like this HP, if you've lived with like 50 HP level 3, or if you've lived with like 100 HP a little bit later on in the game, that's because of the durability patch. So you're fully uh, fully feeling that effect, I think, in most games you play. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this video and perhaps learned something. Definitely a little bit snowball-y, but you know, after the huge back and forth games I've had lately, I felt like something is important to go snowball -y, even though she was under a lot of pressure in that early game. So thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. All my Belvest thoughts and Tips and tricks are on my main channel. Huge video there. And best jungles also as well for you. A lot more content coming for this patch and for all the buffs and changes. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. Now I have coaching.